Jalen Hurts is a better quarterback and a better passer than Carson Wentz is and has been this year. And people will get angry at that because Jalen Hurts is not a traditional passing quarterback. And to seems you, seems coded to me. Yeah, to you, I would like to say, go fuck yourself. Yeah, it seems coded. <laughs> um, and uh, the facts are the facts. And the Eagles took flack, and Kevin Cole wrote a great article on PFF.com about the Jalen Hurts pick. He got a lot of flack for taking Jalen Hurts when they had Carson Wentz. It was a great pick. Dare I say, potentially a franchise-defining pick for the next 10, 15 years. And there's a chance that it isn't, and that's okay too. That's the whole point of that pick. It gave them flexibility. It gave them flexibility to get rid of Carson Wentz, who stinks. It gave them flexibility to play Jalen Hurts, to draft a Devontae Smith, to see Jalen Hurts mature and to make a call on Jalen Hurts after getting information about him. And oh, by the way, the guy that isn't good at throwing the football has the 16th best PFF passing grade. Actually, sorry, 15th best PFF passing grade this year. Has a big time throw rate of nearly 6%. Carson Wentz, remember, touchdown interception ratio, which is complete bullshit. Carson Wentz's is below 4%. So before you come at you know, the Eagles and say, oh, Jalen Hurts can't throw the ball. Look at these stats. Go actually, you know, watch how he's played the game of football. He has made some really nice throws. Yeah, he's not Tom Brady. He's not Joe Burrow. He's not, um, he's not Dak Prescott either. But this is only his second year playing in the NFL. And I would be pretty damn encouraged about that. So here's a question that I have for you then, because I agree with everything you've just said. Mm -hmm. Hertz has half a win more above replacement than Wentz. So I think the numbers bear out what you're saying. If you are the Philadelphia Eagles, you have two more years left and presumably two years of a franchise tag yep. um, for, for Hertz. You have three first round picks this year. Do you go in on those first round picks? Mm -hmm. At, to, to support Hertz mm. fully, yep. knowing farewell that like, you know, the given the success rate at the position, given, you know, how things, um, you know, yep. uh, yeah, yeah. you know, can go. Or do you hedge a little bit and trade back out of one of those first round picks and give yourself some ammunition in case yeah. it weren't to, it wasn't to work out? Because we've, we've seen this happen, this song and dance happen before. And again, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that Hurts this, isn't going to work out. I'm saying, yeah. like, if you go, like, let's say you go no, lineman, lineman, wide receiver, or lineman, running back, line, whatever, and you, you get stuck, and then Hurts stinks, and then you're like, oh, God, I got three guys who, if they, it's like Cleveland, if well, they all work the, out. By the same token, what if Hurts is pretty good? And That's you what go, I'm saying. And yeah. you go, oh, well, is it because... Yeah, of that group because you do get the cost control with it. If Hertz is good enough to earn a second contract, then those three first round picks are all cost control for the second half yeah. of that issue. So it, it and it's a good question. And you cost control Hertz now, and you say, "Let me build the best roster around him mm -hmm. to try and win a Super Bowl." This is a rational versus reasonable conversation. That, that's what I've decided. These are okay. You can't expect humans to be perfectly rational in all of these situations. You can only hope that they're reasonable. <laughs> and I think what I would be hoping for with the Eagles is that they're reasonable. I think it's reasonable to look down the line a little bit and say, I have a ton of draft capital this year. Do I want to extend that and have those and have optionality further down the road? Right? I think that's a reasonable take. But it's also reasonable to say, I like three players in the first round this year that can make an immediate contribution or a very soon contribution to this team. And I have a cost controlled quarterback and I'm going all in, mm -hmm. it, not in a way that the Rams are going all in, but yeah. like going all in in the right way from a team building perspective. I also think that's reasonable, even if it's not quite as rational. So I'm good with either. Yeah. They also, as our friend, because I posed this question on social media today, our friend, uh, Jason Fitzgerald, you're on social media over the cap, uh, he said, well, this is why you get you if you are active here, you get these great nuggets. But he mm -hmm. said their cap situation is worse than it looks. And so having the cost controlled players uh, now might benefit them more than later. Um, so, you know, and, you know, one of the things you could think about was also be trading one of, you know, trading a first round pick for a veteran. But like that doesn't seem feasible for them either. So uh, that, you know, a little bit of ammunition to there, like. 
it, it's honestly like quite a, a come up for the Eagles, right? Like Sirianni did not look like a good hire. He looks fine now. Um, defense is not all that creative, but they're they're getting the job done against an easy schedule. Um, yeah, it, it'll be an interesting offseason for the Eagles. It, it's so funny how uh, two months ago, Miami at one and seven, and was it San Francisco? No. Mm -mm. Who was the other pick that they had? Uh, Indianapolis. They were all, Indianapolis was 0 and 3, yeah. 1 and 4. Like it looked like they were going to get three top 10 picks. Now they're all kind of outside because like Miami, Indianapolis, and they have all improved. So it maybe isn't as dire of a situation, uh, you know, as far as. You know, like those first round picks are not going to be necessarily as like valuable. So right, maybe so what they do with them is not going to be as not going to have as much leverage, let's say.